Hello, can everyone hear me okay? We're going to get started in just a few minutes as I just grab some water. If anyone's in the chat and wants to say hey, feel free to come say hey. I'm going to just share some stuff. Make sure people can see here what's happening. going to start some tunes in a bit. And we'll get right into it. Let's see. Hello, Marco Asturias. Welcome. All right, I'm going to go grab some water. And then we're going to get into it. All right. One sec, guys. All right, we're back. T Daz, what's up, man? Six concurrent viewers. Hello, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? I'm going to play some music. We're going to get funky tonight. Let me know if this is coming through at all. It's pretty low on my end. We're going to do some future funk. I don't know how to make walls. Well, you've come to the right stream, my friend. So today, we're going to get funky, and we're going to make some maps, because my mic is roboting. That's not good. Hang on a sec. Let's try this. Is this better? Your voice got wonky. Okay. I tried to throw some music in the background, but it doesn't seem to be cooperating. Oh, no. Okay, how about now? Is the mic better now? Still bad. Heck. Well, that's not good. I'm going to stop and restart, I think. I'll be right back. All right, I think I'm back. Can y'all hear me okay again? I should be back. My connection looks excellent. It seems that the music was causing the issue, which is annoying. I don't know what's up with my setup as of late, but something, something's going on. I used to be able to play music in the background of my videos, and it wouldn't cause issues. But now whenever I play music, especially from YouTube, there seems to be some type of challenge associated. You know what? I wonder what it is. I think it's because I switched browsers recently. Now I'm on the, I'm using Brave because I got rid of Google Chrome after an incident. So maybe that's why, maybe Brave doesn't play nicely with OBS in the same way. I don't know. I'll have to keep experimenting. But and the funny thing is, and like now I'm embarrassed because I do want to play some tunes, but I do not have a browser. I don't have an alternative browser. Um, and I don't feel like downloading one right now and setting it up. So we're not going to, this is not the funky edition. We're just going to rename the stream. Far Emblem Cartography, Pandan, Pandan Masterclass. We're going to get educational here. So, for those of you in the chat, welcome. Wow, seven viewers. So impromptu, I love it. Um, so let's talk a bit about maps. Um... I really like making maps once in a while. I get inspiration for a new map. And today was one of those days. I kind of came to me in a bit of a dream. And just tell us the tune and we'll listen to it by ourselves. Um, I mean, I want to put on... You <laughs> tired education on 45 on a school night. Yeah, man, we got to prep. So once in a while... So I don't know. I don't know if you guys have this because I think everyone in the chat is working on some kind of 
hack project. I just like dream of it. I just have dreams about maps and they come to me and I'm like, this is a cool idea. I need to build this. And it's kind of just like I rush over to my mapping tool of choice and start getting those tiles ready. And I had one of those moments last night and I had this idea and now I'm going to make it happen. And I thought given some conversations that I was having today, it might be a good idea. So what I'm thinking I'll do is I will talk a little bit about the different, um, the different tiles and we'll talk a little bit about, and I'll kind of just like demo it because I have an idea that might use most of these tiles and it can give you some sense on how to use them. So I'm curious if my cursor is showing up here on this image on my OBS. I don't think it is. So we're going to have to kind of wing it, but. I had a dream idea for a map once it was not a good map. Well, it happens. So when it comes to mapping, I like to use FE Map Creator. This is a tool by BWD Yeti, creator of Fire Emblem 7X and the FEXNA engine. And he also made this mapping tool, it's a lesser known tool, that I really like. I find it easy to use. It has a couple of features that Tile does not. And I've, this is how I learned to map and going to tiled was confusing for me. So I just stick with this and then I will make my tile changes in FE Builder because it has a UI and that makes it a little bit easier for me. I think tiled is probably overall a superior tool for most people, but this works well for me. And one of the things it does really well that I like is it allows you to randomize stuff. Um, which is fun for like getting mountains or just like weird pieces or just getting a sense of like how something should look together um, because the vanilla isn't always the best at doing this. So what I will do, arena boat. You guys want an arena boat? I wasn't planning on doing an arena boat, but we can do an arena boat. Um, the vision I had for this map was actually, <coughs> excuse me, was a town on a lake, kind of like in The Hobbit at the end of the movie where they fight smog and there's the city of Dale on the lake. And I was like, that'd be pretty cool. Like for a fog defend map, just this town on a lake. And you're kind of just like huddling around this Island with these houses and it's a big old lake. Um, But we can try arena boat first. We can do that. Let's, let's do arena boat first. I'll show you what this looks like. So generally speaking, um, I'll warm up with I'll warm up with arena boat and this will be a good chance to show how the boat tiles work because I was a little confused at first because there's a lot of boat tiles like you can see over on the right hand side here um, that there's a lot of different boat tiles you don't really need all of them one of the things that is kind of stinky about some of these vanilla tile sets is that there's a lot of tiles it's not very intuitive and learning it can be a bit of a chore um, the important thing is to experiment and reference vanilla when you need to. Um, XNA, yeah, XNA is like a coding framework that you need to install to make FEXNA run, but that's neither here nor there. Now, when starting with the map, I think it's always good to start small and go bigger as you feel the need to. And the reason I suggest this is because personally, I dislike big maps. I find that larger maps tend to be harder to balance well and create good flow for because there's more space and thus more variation for your player in terms of the types of moves that they might make. In a smaller map, you can position the enemies in such a way where you can more easily deduce where the player is going to be at a given point in time. Like on turn one, they'll go here and then these enemies will come and attack them. And then on two turn, they'll probably go here and then these enemies will be in their range or whatever. They're much more able to like map out a few moves in advance on a smaller map and kind of control like a tight pacing in a bigger map. There's so much more variation in how they can play because there's simply more space for them to move. It can be harder to maintain the same flow. That's not to say all big maps are bad. You can definitely make a big map good. I think it's harder to make a big map good. I would say in general, start small and go bigger. I think exceptions to this are like, Generally speaking, castle maps need to be a little bit bigger because there's a lot of extra walls that you need to build and that takes up extra space. And then there's also, um, for things like boats, 
you generally want more space, as well as uh, Fog of War, because you want to make sure there's enough space where you have just like, you kind of just want like empty aesthetic space for Fog where you want enemies to lurk and come out of, um, depending on the style of Fog of War map, that is. So keep that in mind. But generally speaking, I like to start with a general shape. So for some reason, I tend to like the 18 by 15 as a starting point oftentimes. But for this one, I want to go a bit bigger because I know it's going to be a bit of a bigger town. I would argue that like most of the time you barely need to go over like 20 by 20. Like 20 by 20 is huge. Um, I would say I'll probably do something like 22 by 18 because I kind of want to have this like wider lake image in mind. But we'll start here. This is probably as like big as I feel comfortable with most of the time. But also again, depending on like when you think this map will be used, I'm kind of building this in isolation. I have an idea of how I might use it, but I don't know how many units I'll have or the level or how I want to set them up. So this is what I'm going with. Now, if you're like doing something where you know you have units that are starting in different positions, you might want to create more space. Um, but generally speaking, standard FE map, Everyone starts in one space. We're going to move around accordingly. Maybe you'll have a split in there, hopefully. You don't need to be too big. Just looking at the chat here. Problem with small maps, they get plagued by choke points. That's true. That can certainly happen. But I think it depends on how you design it. Um, and it depends on like how you define a choke point. Like Some people look at a choke point and they're like, oh, it's too wide choke point. To me, it's like too wide is fine. One wide is where it's a problem. Um... But I can understand that too. Like you just have less room to work with, but you have to design more intentionally as a result. I think one tile choke points like have their place, but they shouldn't be everywhere. And they shouldn't be your only passage to a specific point. Like for example, here we'll do a quick example here. Like if I'm making a river, which I actually can't do, but let's say I have, I'm gonna start real quick just to like show off like a one tile choke example so like here's my wall and i want to make sure my players are going to start here and they have to go through the wall if the only way through the wall is through a single choke point that really stinks like if this is the wall right like here's the wall and i have all my army funneling through this one point that's really sucky now to make this better what i might do is I might make something like this, which would be, right? So like a two tile and then like an off one tile. So like I have options and like there's a main path, there's a side path um, to mix it up a little bit, right? So just an idea there um, when it comes to like trying to make smaller maps work is like give alternate paths, like don't funnel everyone through a single choke, but Kind of getting started here. So boat arena. So the boat tile set, um, it's like kind of in order. Oh, which tiles did I grab from? Um, heck, let's see. Oh, cause this like tile. So this image I have on the screen is a static image that I uploaded. And I don't know if my cursor shows up on OBS when I'm hovering over. So it's harder for me to point, but Let's see. I don't think my cursor is showing up there, TDOS. I'm sorry. Here, let me do this instead. I have an idea. We'll get creative with it. So here's all of your wall tiles directly imported from the village tile set. They're here. So that should be the first point. And um, that's your... That's your wall. Those are the wall tiles that you have available to you. Um, these like harder looking ones with the horizontal sides and these, these are walls. These are walls. These lower ones that are a bit more detailed, these are fence tiles. Fence tiles are used for areas that are outdoors. So flyers can fly over them. Walls are set up so that flyers cannot fly over them. So use these for buildings and these for like fences or posts and things like that um and so the way to really tell that is kind of just like by looking and then sort of knowing so like everything from like oops did not mean to do that control z is your friend um everything here 
These are walls. And then these are walls. What's confusing is that this is a fence. These light ones. And then there's a darker one over down on the bottom here. This is wall as well. So dark is like wall and the light one is fence. And then for like your top parts, you have these sections here. And so I'll just demonstrate like how I might use that. So I have my... Let's start, let's keep it really simple. I'll just like, it's a bunch of road. And then, ooh, I don't want to do that. I don't want all fence. And then I build a little fence. Got my little doodads there. This is also fence, this tile here. And then you have two options for these guys. The one on the left is fence. The one on the right is wall. So keep that in mind. The one on the right side here is um, directly next to the arena on your vanilla tile set if you're following along, if you see on the, the side here. This one is toward the bottom near the wall tile. So you can see how it's super unintuitive and just requires a bit of trial and error to learn. But I'm going to add in my walls here. Oops. So there we go. And part of it's just trial and error. And like some of the wall tiles, like you can see, like here's like an end piece, right? Because it makes a shadow. 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 And maybe I'll let that one extend over to the side because there's, I want to imply there's more space over here. But there's wall. And then your fence. Now I want to make a building. So this fence leads to some type of building. I'm going to put um, this here. And then I'm going to take my wall tiles gonna do a little bit of this. So I'm gonna take these corner wall pieces. Hey, Hosel, um, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Yes, this will be uploaded. This will be available afterwards. And then take these walls. And then you could see in like the top section bef below the floor section that looks kind of like the boat. Oops. Wall, 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 and then for your ups and downs, you have a lot of options. And you have a lot of options for all of these, and it's like hard to discern, like just from looking at the tile set, it can be hard to discern exactly which one is right. Part of it is just like knowing the shading and kind of just like figuring it out from trial and error. Like there's this one here that I like to use for shading. Like generally the rough edges you wanna use um, on the outside to represent that the wall is ending. Um, and then like the light on the inside. So for example, oops, hey, no problem. And then you can see here, no, that's wrong. Here we go. Yeah, it just takes trial and error. And you just wanna make sure like this is lined up and it's not always intuitive, but you can see here that like the dark part is outlined with the dark here and the light parts on the inside. So it's consistent, that consistent shading that you're getting. Hey, Zorman. Yeah, I, dude, I really love your tile sets. My issue is that I never got comfortable with them because I had already built everything with the vanilla ones. So it was just easier for me. But if I was to start from scratch again, I would just like reinsert all of yours because they're amazing. Check out Zora means map guys. They're really good. Um, and then like Zora means should be teaching this, but you can see there just like the shading. And again, it's just trial and error and looking at like maps that you think look good and comparing. And then I'm going to do some fence stuff. So there's this fun tile here that I really like that looks kind of like a ladder. I like to use it as like an edge of a wall, kind of like how you'd use a pillar in a castle tile set. And then let's do this. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna do this. Boop, boop, so I got my wall, got my fence. I'll do this over here too. And then I'm gonna make some stairs. And then add some floor. 
and the pirate and like it gets a little tricky oops and it gets a little tricky with um the floor tiles because there's floor and then there's boat tiles and this can impact like what background shows up when you're actually playing the map this section directly above the wall these are the floor tiles so these are the tiles that you want to use like if you're making like like in the Bazba chapter in FE8 and you kind of want that like wooded fortress feeling that's made in the village tile set and it looks nothing like it but these floor tiles um are used for like interior spaces while the ones that you see over on the boat are used for outdoor spaces so if you want to put something on a boat or like on a dock use the ones that are near or on the boat in the tile set and then use this square directly above the wall for your internal um, pieces because this is going to give you the right background image and then you want to make sure that you have your wall shaded properly this is how i like to do it You can see that there's some tile sets um, that have, you can see that there's like these some tiles that have shading up top. There's these nice corner pieces that do both and then side ones. It just helps with like getting everything shaded correctly. And then light a little door here, boom. And so I hope this is like a helpful little demo of like how I would build like walls and um, walls and fences. Is that helpful, TDOS? Yeah, I could explain barrels real quick. I'm pretty bad at barrels, to be fair. I would disagree with that, Zor. I mean, I think you know how to use your resources very well, but I can understand, like, talking about it is different than doing it. I'm definitely better at teaching than doing. Yeah, and that's understandable, T-Does. I think it's, um, it just comes down to practice and just getting familiar with the tile set. Like, you'll notice that the majority of chapters that I made in Vision Quest use either the village or the field tile set, and those are the two I'm most comfortable with. And those are probably where I would say like I made my best maps with those two tile sets. And a lot of it just comes down to familiarity and getting your reps in and just like going in, trying again, trying again, trying again. And you'll learn through time. And it's okay to like start rough and make the aesthetics better later. But I find that for myself, I like to see what the map will look like at the end as soon as possible by making like all the structures as I want, like pretty neat um, so that I get a better visual of how I think it'll look. Um, so that's that's walls and fencing. Um, actually, I kind of want to see how this looks. Yeah, I kind of like that a little bit better. And then love making map layouts, doing the design. Yeah, I agree that the layout is fun for me. Like. I very often just kind of wing it now. Like I used to be very um, into doing it in Excel and that was really helpful for me for like getting familiar with like flow and things like that. But then once I got comfortable enough with tile set and with this tool, I just go straight into here when I'm making a map because I just find it saves me some time. But when you're new, do it works for you, right? Like the most important thing is that you learn like flow and spacing and what's the right amount. And it just comes from like playing and playing and making stuff and testing and iterating and going back and forth. And it's just a, it's an iterative process and you just have to kind of develop a, you develop a feel for it. Like mapping is more art than science for sure. In my opinion, I love to see a segment on class unit skill abilities. Oh man. Um, that's a big topic. Darkness champion. And hello. Um, I don't know if I'll get to that. I won't get that to that today for sure, but it's something I could consider. Um, I think with, I think in general, just to kind of like close off on that while you're here, um, I think that skills are the kind of thing that really depend on just like the type of experience you want. And it's hard for me to talk about it in isolation because the context of that skill makes a huge difference. Um, like if my game, like for example, even if you gave Swordmasters 
thirty percent crit like they had. Yeah, let's say if you gave FE seven Swordmasters the same amount of crit that they got in FE six, it would not make FE seven Swordmasters as good as they are in FE six because the game is so much more enemy phase oriented and doesn't require the skills that a Swordmaster provides. So. I think skill balance is just very situational. I have my general thoughts on it, but I'll save that for another time. But anyhow, um, barrels, because Random Wizard asked. So there's a couple of different barrels we can work with here. There's a handful. Um, I'm not super familiar with them. Generally speaking, you kind of just like want to start with one and then add the floor shading below it. So like something like this, right? So we have barrels. Um, you could add some rope below a barrel. Um, there's this nice shading like that for the barrel. Like the barrel should have this rounded shading. I also will use that for my pillars and this tile set as well. So something like this. Yeah. And then add the little lower one. So that's why I would do like my pillars in this tile set. So the same one I'd use for the upper part of the wall. And then the same shading I'd use for the barrel. Not really too much else to say on barrels for me they're nifty i guess i think they can work in some context but i don't think it's they're more of like an aesthetic piece than anything else yeah zora i mean i agree with that i think it's really just like you kind of just do it by feel with barrels i don't know i'm looking at these and i can't really tell the differences between them right one has no dark shading on the back that's good to know yeah, I always just kind of go with this front left one. That's usually my barrel of choice. Use when hugging the wall. That's good to know. Yeah, Zora, me again, you should be teaching this. Yeah, I am not an expert on this kind of like finer nuance. But I see it now, like looking at the background. Cargo ships are on docks. Interesting. Okay. The more you know... But anyway, we have big bunches of barrels. That makes sense. Like some barrels will look better. Like if you want to do like a bunch in a row, like that doesn't look as good as say that. Yeah. Look at that. Let's compare. Yeah, for sure. Look at that night and day. With those barrels right here. That's pretty nifty. Good to know. Um, is that helpful, Random Wizard? I mean, Zoramine really answered it better than me, but I hope these examples and visuals are helpful. Barrel tech, yeah. I learned something. I didn't even think about these barrels, but I do notice it now. The single barrel versus the group barrel. Do the bunch on the left. I'll let Zoramine confirm what you just said, Random Wizard, but that... I'm just reading it real quick. I think that's fine. Cool. So are we, do we really want to do boat arena? Is that what we're saying? All right. So when I start with my water, I usually just tile spam because I just want to have a backdrop that helps me visualize. Then for the boat, Knowing the shape of your boat really helps. There's a standard width that the boat gives you. That's like this. And the boat comes with all these extra tiles, but I like to just clean it up and kind of go with that. Then you have this piece. This little, like, nubbin that is used to make the boat. There we go. To give the boat the little point. So... There's four pieces there that are kind of all disparate, but you'll see as you piece together. This this is something you could rip straight out of a vanilla boat and just kind of copy it verbatim. The biggest difference that you might be making with like your boats versus vanilla is making them wider. And there's a couple different techniques for that, um, depending on like how wide you want to make them. I see this come up a lot lately where people do this kind of like This kind of shape where they do like this extra like wide this wide boy boat like that. 
I personally don't think this looks great a lot of the time, and it's certainly not how, like, you know, like I don't even know what to do here. Like, I just kind of just spam tiles and figure it out. Maybe this is a good opportunity for a barrel. There we go. And then, yeah, the problem with the arena tiles here is that I have to use grass. So, yeah, like, I'd have to, like, put, like, grass on the boat. Doesn't really work. Someone would have to make a custom tile set um, to make the arena look good on a boat because the boat just looks weird with grass on it. And <laughs> barrel tech. Yeah, for sure, Darkness Champion. Totally cool. Let's see. So that's... um. That's the boat. Yeah, I don't know how I would do an arena. I mean, mast tiles, boars? Let's see. Make an arena-like boat. Um, I think I'm going to skip the boat. But yeah, mast. It's, I think, pretty similar to, like, what you would do for a barrel. You just copy it, and then you put the shading at behind it. So not at this corner piece. So you have, if it's a square you're thinking of that you're working with, this bottom piece that's, like, the base of the mast, the top of the mast, your shading, and then a blank one. That's just the floor. And that's how I would do a mast and set that up. Just make the grass the same shade of yellow as the boat. Yeah, you could totally make it work with some palettes. With this tool and where I'm at right now, I'd have to do that later. But yeah, you could make that work. Yeah, scatterbrain segment on what you're trying. I'll, I'll consider it. Um, skills aren't really one of my favorite topics to discuss. I don't really think I have much to add besides don't do too much. That's usually my approach. Um, but yeah, the mast is pretty similar to the barrel. But just keep the square in mind when working with the mast. Is that helpful, Bors? For sure. No problem. All right, let's start fresh because I'm not doing arena boat right now, but I will do lake time. Door for an inner boat. Hey, Super Rocky. Um, Not on this tile set. So the village tile set for FE8 is pretty limited. There's a specific boat tile set from FE7 that you can always import that has the shop and the arena or the shop and the the shop in the arena, the shop and the armory set up. Um, I know Zoramine also has their own revised tile set that might have some of the things that you're looking for with that. The vanilla boat is pretty limited. Hey, Mask, I'm glad to think so. I You could... You could... Um, Rocky, you could do something like that. You would just need to change how the terrain works in game. So you would need to basically like say like this tile now maps to the arena instead of another thing. Oh, it's from the similar to Venno's tile set. Hey Morris. Now we're just we're talking maps. Um then Alright, so I kinda wanna make my lake map now. I think it's lake map time. I'm gonna just like lower the width a little bit and see how this goes. So when I'm starting out, I wanna know what my general outline is. I don't like looking at like this sort of random background, so I'll just put on some tile spam. And then, hmm, I'm actually looking at this and I'm not sure how I'm gonna make this work because Hmm. This might be a little problematic because I don't have the tile set that I thought I had. Hmm. Let me see. Well, the stream might be dead before it even started, lads. Um. Mm, I'll just have to reimagine it a little bit. So, I'm going to just take some water, and I'm going to, so, so, I mean, I'm looking for 
like you know how in the field style set they have the cliffs that face the water i want to use those to create like a lake structure and then put houses on top of that because there's like these beachy ones but that doesn't really fit the vibe that i'm going for here but like i can do something something like this right so we got a bit of water and then we can do some sand instead And I just kind of start out by like mapping out my corners. FE7's tile set palette. Sure, I can take a look. I mean, I can, for the sake of time, because it's kind of late, I'm gonna just do this, right? So I just like to start off just kind of getting the basic shapes down here. Kind of making my edges here and i have this like nice little square obviously you never want to keep anything this boxy because th this looks stupid like this is a, like this is a swimming pool i just made a swimming pool um so this is for where your pirates can hang out in an epic cutscene. but what i'd probably do is i would add a bit more sand tile which is this nice conveniently placed yellow square and I would just like throw some, well first, actually I would do this. So let's do, let's do that first. Yeah, I like that. That looks way better. Pool emblem, <laughs> epic swimming pool. Yeah, exactly. This is a summer seasonal right here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start just like painting a little bit. And then just kind of like do this to get my like some, get some weird shapes going, right? Just like get funky with it. Yeah, this lake is a little small. Is this guy? This is the process, man. We're just we're we're making maps. You want to do some like irregular shapes too. Like you don't just want to like follow a predictable pattern, because that can be kind of dull. Like you want to make like some squiggles. Like I'm not a pro by any stretch of the imagination. See, it's kind of like the Wu Tang Clan logo. End shape. Let's see. Um, T does. This is like you're seeing me in like the raw state right now because I'm doing stuff that like I'm super unfamiliar with. Like, this is super super different than what I would normally do. Actually, no. This is how I'm learning. I'm in the process of learning this tile set and doing something like unusual with it. So I'm making this kind of like weird, funky shape. And I'm kind of happy with this for now. Let me just kind of round this out a bit more. Um, you can pass it to me, Zormin, if you want to just DM it to me on FEU. That would be chill, but don't sweat it because I'm not gonna be able to boot it up right now. I'm going to try this out first. I just want to see if, like, I like the general, like, shape of this before I commit to, like, actually make something. I have no idea if I'll actually use this for anything, mind you. I just kind of was like, I feel like doing a stream. Um, I feel like making some maps. So now, let's see. Yeah, so see here, like, I'm trying to put some houses. See, this is too small. I need to go bigger. And that's fine we can go bigger and the way i like to go bigger and so my one of the things i'll do is i'll add a bit more height so let's do let's add a bit and then what i do is i just copy the whole thing so just nifty right click on my paintbrush tool scroll out the whole way hold it now look i can paste this whole thing i'm gonna go new map boom bigger size and then I'm just gonna do a little bit of this, all right? And just kind of stretch it out. Paste that bad boy back in. Oops, no, I don't wanna do that. And then just kind of just like stretch it out a bit. And there's no wrong way to do this. But this is how I've learned. And then you just kind of clean it up as you go. There's no, Bob Ross would say, no mistakes, only happy accidents. Just figuring it out as we go, because that's how we learn. And I'm totally like, 
I can't believe there's 21 people watching me make this awful looking map. Um, that's really funny. Hello, everyone. Thanks for stopping by. Okay. Yeah, this looks a little bit better. I do want to make sure there's like enough room over here for like stuff on the side. <laughs> this is not something I would have expected to see tonight. Yeah, I know, right? This is very much on a whim. I was in a good mood today. Um, and I was like, I want to make a map. We're making a map. Taking notes, hey, Bloop. Yeah, so this is just, you're just watching me. This is just how I learn, guys. That's what we're watching. We're watching me learn how I do this. The learning process. All right, this looks a little bit better. St studying VR zero. Hmm. Thank you, Zoramin. Game design junkies. I know. When the modern games don't give you what you want, you got to make it yourself. All right, this looks a little bit better. So now let's see. I want a couple houses. I like using these closed ones. Do not learn from someone trying to learn themselves. I mean, you can learn from watching people learn. I get so much insight, like watching how people try and do shit. I find it fascinating. And then... <laughs> That's how it works, right? Exactly, Bloopy. Exactly. I think I just want to stretch this out a little bit more. So I like this, boom, little extension. And then just want to make sure there's enough room. I don't want too many, like, small chokes here. And then throw an arena for good measure. Actually, no, the arena looks bad there. This is probably a map, but just do houses. Yeah, we can have like one little one choke here. And then keep this space a bit more open. And then now let's start. I just want to kind of start fleshing it out. So boom, boom. Now the question is like, where do I put? Oh, this tile set doesn't have bridges. <sighs> Second tile set, man. This tile set is killing me. Save us, Zora, I mean. Oh, it does have bridges. Oh, it has these planks. We can make we could make um. However the hell you pronounce it from Pokemon Ruby. <laughs> this looks so silly. Um, uh, let's see. We can make this work, I think. I actually feel pretty confident we can make this work. There we go. Boom. Using these dock tiles here. Look at that. It's official when you got these little markers on the edges, you know? And then... Boom. <laughs> this looks super weird, but I'm actually really into it. Yeah, the plank... So this particular palette is bad for the planks. It'll look much better when I do... A different palette. Yeah, I I just like this this palette, but it's what I have in my folder. Let's see. Yeah, this is gonna just be the weirdest looking map ever, dude. My sleep paralysis demon is my field tile, so it's object image. I believe it. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is such a jank looking map, guys. But we're totally, this is like, you guys are watching me do something just extremely experimental. I have no idea what I'm doing. I really don't. But that's part of the fun. You can do it too. And then just do a little copy over. There we go. I have this nice plank on plank action. How do you change the palette without breaking the terrain? 
How do you mean TDOS? Yeah, the palette is, is separate mostly. There's like a separate image that you need to manipulate that has the palette. The palette's really annoying to manipulate and it took me quite a while to learn. Shout out to Zenith for teaching me some of the basics. But yeah, the palette is just such a pain in the ass. Okay. Um, I think we're gonna do a little bit of this. A little bit of that. And then I think I just need to like rework this a bit. Yeah, I didn't like that. This map makes no sense. You just have to assume, you just have to do magic. Assume magic. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think. Protect the town from pirates. I think what I'm going to do, because I was like, I could make this map bigger. But I'm like, no. We're just going to commit to water. So we're just going to commit to water, boys. We're out here. We're just going to, we're just out here now. We we are the town from Pokemon Ruby. We are Pacific Lodge town or however the hell you say it. We're just going to, what we're going to do is like, so if I was to like, put this map in a story with some crazy layout like this, I would just say that like they're out in the middle of the lake and you're just seeing a segment of it versus like here's the whole town and like the edges. So edge sand around the houses first. That could work. I could do that. I'm not even sure where I want to put the houses yet though. But I think actually this is going to just open things up a lot. And of course, I always like to do these little edge beat these little edge dudes here. Because I find it just helps like add a little bit of perspective to the map. And then I usually like to put my rewards in corners. So like if I'm thinking like this is going to be a defend map in the fog. And so the center will be like where your party starts. And then I want to have a house here. Maybe another house like. Over here, you know what, let's do, ooh, you know what we should do? We're gonna do one of these bad boys. We're gonna do the old double, doubly do it. I like these guys a lot. Slide bounds on the edge of making a map. You gotta do what works for you, man. That's what's most important. Does it work for you? Great. If it doesn't work for you, then what are you doing? Yeah, I'm definitely vibing way more with this too. Um, I think I might do this, yeah. Um, let's get rid of this guy. So yeah, it's just an iterative process. You kind of just like figure out what works as you go. And you decide what works for you. You let the map work for you. Don't let, tell, don't let the map tell you what to do. Okay. Um... We'll see. I mean, I think it's just different. Like, I don't know. I've been also thinking too, T-Daz. I think you'll appreciate this. Like, I've thought about like, what? Would, how could I recreate the the Battle of Red Cliffs from Sangwa? And, or for, for others who are familiar from different ways, from Dynasty Warriors. Because I just love the layout of the map. It's just a ton of boats locked together in these side areas. I would love to create a map like that that has like these fun little objectives. Like a tile change that like sets the boats on fire. Or something like that, you know? I thought that could be kind of cool. Cool to work with. Uh, there we go. Whoops. You just got to be careful. And then let's add another house. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do one of these double bellies. Well, he's going to be slightly off to the side just for a bit of extra flair. Dude, tile changes, I think they're underutilized because they're just hard. They're just hard to do well. Yeah, let's do... 
I like this, and then this kind of shorter guy. And then, oh, I gotta make like this edgy boy here. How am I gonna do this? How, what's, what's my strategy? Oh, let's see. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's just gonna be implied that there's like a bridge under here. Yeah, you can do a lot of dynamic maps. The problem is just like it takes a lot of time to test them and see if that and see that it's like worth doing, right? Because it's like the map flow, you might have a tile change set up and then the map flow is just totally different. Or you could like soft lock the player if like it happens at a weird time. So there's just like a lot of different considerations you need to when you have a dynamic map. Yeah, this map will not have a lot of terrain, and that I personally am okay with that because I usually go pretty heavy on terrain in general. But once in a while, you need a map with no terrain. I think it just adds extra stakes. Well, let's you know, let's do this right. We're gonna do. Oh, I forgot I could do this. Wide boy hours here. Look at that. Terrain is fun. That doesn't look good. Um, I like terrain. Um, let's see. Oh, ho! what can we do? We got these little rocky guys. Ooh, that looks kind of neat. What do you guys think? I can be on board with this. Yeah, look at that. Totally not how it's intended to be used, but just adds so much. You know, what do you guys think? I'm kind of into it. Yeah, as long as it's not an open field of nothingness. Like a map like this, like there's no terrain because it's just like a structure. Um, this would be a good map where like you make like barrels terrain, like guidance style. It do be working though. I'm gonna try just making this a little bit wider. And then just add a little bit of extra oomph here. Pillars down at the bottom that mold in. Hmm. I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. Oh, hmm. I see what you're saying. Pillars. I'm trying to think of which pillar would look right. I get what you mean. There's definitely like Like something like this, maybe? No, that looks weird. Top piece of the brace, but that it extends downward. Bottom piece of the boat. Oh, what a good idea. Hmm. No. I get what you mean, though, because there's nothing... That kind of fits this. It's hard to get that perspective. Yeah, I'm thinking this was better. With the dock tiles.
and then it's getting real experimental, boys. We are out here. We are out here doing it. Okay. Do pillars for docks? Which pillar are you referring to? You're talking about, I'm just going to post it in the top right. This pillar guy here, Zora. No problem. Well, thank you for offering, Zora. That's very nice of you. Yeah, feel free to just throw the link in chat. Yeah, we can do a bit of sand here around the houses. I think that adds a lot, actually. Just give a little more room. Ooh, we can do a sand. Look at that sandbar action, guys. Now we're cooking, we're cooking with gas. Look at this, man. I'm pretty happy with this. I feel like I need to use it. I'm gonna make a new hack just to make the map, just to use this map. I have no idea if this will play well. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do with it, I suppose. But sandbars, underutilized. FE6 had a sandbar. FE6, great game. Look at that. Yeah, I'm liking that. How are you guys feeling about that one? I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, I'm, mm, I get what you mean. I think in some spots it'll look good, in other spots not so much. We can get creative, though, with how we do this. Um, oh, you know what might be cool, guys? You know what might be cool for this one? A boat. How do you guys feel about like a little bit of like a side boat over here on this side? Boat. I feel like... Man, this map is looking big. This is a big map. <laughs> a nice boat. All right, I'm thinking, yeah, you know, let's do the boat. We're going, we're going boat. Now, let me just do a little bit of a boat here. I'm gonna imply, I would like to imply that there's more boat off map. I think that's always a nice touch. Should be the ones that are the bottom most. Yeah, I need to fix that. I was just kind of experimenting. I will fix that. Just trying to get the general layout first before I go and do my round of polish. Yeah, I need to, I'll fix these up later. Okay, a little bit of a boat action here. That's the wrong side. There we go, that looks right. Okay, Get the shading down. And now just a little bit of a boat edge. No, okay, it's gonna be a tiny boat. Yeah.
We love boat maps, dude. I'm all about boat maps. I'm thinking... You know what? We're extending this boat. We're going boat crazy here. Yeah, this is going to be a big old boat. Already a large boat compared with the tiny villages. It's a warship, man. I get what you're saying. It's a long boat. It's where they keep their, their town arena. Yeah, perspective can be funky to work with at some times. So I like reinforcement stairs, maybe. And then we kind of get this little area with nothing going on, but I think that's fine. We need like some peg reinforcements in these like little areas and some land lubber reinforcements over here. <laughs> Have fun, Zora. I'll see you later. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think a little sand goes a long way here. Just a little bit of sand, boys. I'll try this out. See how this looks? That looks okay. Actually, no, it looks bad. Can't do sand next to those tiles. Good to know. But now we know. Oh, we can do that, though. I like that. I'm hooked on the look. All right, now. <laughs> this map is so weird. Yeah, Pacific Lodge Town. What's up, Warpath? Yeah, we're just kind of messing around. Um... I love how everyone knows that too, that it's Pacific Lodge Town. It was not my intent, but because I was thinking Lake Town, like, the city of Dale from The Hobbit, but we kind of ended up here. And I can, I'm kind of I'm feeling this map right now. I'm really feeling it. Let's see. And then, I mean, I'll need to see how it help plays. Still have a lot to do there. But I think we just need to do some wider docks here. Oops. Did not mean to do that. Massive water walking opportunities. Yeah, this is this is a warpath map and waiting, I'm sure. Pirate time. Yeah, let's see. I'm feeling pretty good about this. I'm kind of on board with it. No idea how it will play. Absolutely none. But that's what that's why we test, you know. Why we iterate now? Because originally I was thinking this is a defend map, but the more I look at it, I'm kind of thinking it's more like the with the multiple pathways and stuff. I feel like a seize or a defeat boss move from one corner to the other corner makes more sense. But I kind of like defend. I kind of like having everyone start out in this like center area ish. And they have to kind of work their way through. I do like the idea of like you have to defend from all these different sides coming in. But I'm also kind of liking seas. Hey, darkness, no worries, man. Thanks for stopping by. Um, a route map could also work. I mean, you could make this work. 
A split party defend also could work. My issue with this, I feel like this map is just a little too small for a split party, but I like where your head's at. Um, I'll need to see. I was originally thinking like have like 12 units kind of clustered in the middle and then just kind of send them out if I do their way. But, you know, I think I would just need to make it bigger, honestly, if I wanted to do defense. That's really all there is to it. Because this map, like size-wise, this map is pretty big, but I'm trying to think, like, let's say you start here, right? So this is how I, like, mentally map things out. Definitely split the party, for sure. I want, like, different rewards in each of the corners. But let's see, like if I start here, one, two, three, four, five, two, two, three, four, five, three, two, three, four, five, four, two, three. You can get here in like four turns, probably more like five or six, depending on density, maybe seven. That's actually not bad. That's actually a pretty decent defense map. You make this like a nine turn defend map. Start out in the center. House here, house here, house your boss there. Freebie house here. Enjoy Sailor Moon, Morris. But I'm thinking that might be the move. And then... Do a little bit of this. Yeah, I can groove with that. A lot of rewards here. And I think it definitely needs fog. Definitely needs fog. I'm just going to save this real quick because I'm liking it. Log town. Okay. Now, let's see how these guys look. I don't think it needs to be on every single one, but in certain spots, you know? Mm, no, I don't like those ones. Let's try this. Timed route in the fog. That could work. Could be interesting. There we go. Now I'm kind of just at the polishing phase where I just kind of like pick random tiles and see what works and looks good. See what kind of fits the mood I'm going for. Untraversable tiles for most units. I mean, I have to, I'd have to experiment and see. I was originally thinking like this could, you know, the other thing I was thinking too, Warpath, is because I was playing JP Hack this morning. This could be cool for like a torch map, like the foggy nautical themed map. You have torches and corners and stuff. So there's like some fog, but it's mostly aesthetic because there are little torches set up. I get what you mean, though. Yeah, we could we could figure something out. I do think like some little dude. Imagine putting like little like buoys with torches on them, like these little just like torch islands. I think that could be kind of cool, like a torch island here, a torch island here, a torch island here, a torch island here. And you have these little like beacons of light, but then it's fog, so it's like the fog is really more aesthetic at that point. I think that could be cool. Little, little torch buoy. Figure that out. Enemy archers shoot the torches. Yeah, you could make something like that work. Little buoy lanterns. Exactly, exactly. Because you, you can't tell me that these people who live on a lake don't need light. Like, how else are they getting light? Um, yeah, but that could be neat. I'll have to experiment with that. Love iterating, guys. Thank you for sharing your ideas. Makes everything better when we all share a little bit. All right, now I think I just want to do... Um, I think, yeah, I think this is fine, honestly. The sun, yeah. Well, at night, what are they doing? You tell me. Don't know. 
Um, yeah, I think this is good. I'm pretty happy with this for now. I would need to play to see how this looks in game. Yeah, for a first draft, I'm pretty happy. Like, I could definitely like plug this into Builder and start doing my enemy placement. Like, I wouldn't have a problem with that. This feels like a very good like early mid game defend map. That's the that's the vibe I'm going with. This is like chapter like six through twelve, like that kind of sweet spot. You're just figuring out the army composition. You maybe you're able to bench a handful of units. Maybe you've gotten like your first promo in besides your Jagan. That's the kind of vibe. This is definitely like I'm between the levels of like 7 to 15 and maybe one guy promoted. It's a very specific vibe that I'm feeling for this map, but it's that kind of like size. But that's not to say you can't do that with later chapters. It's just harder to balance. I feel like a good fog defend map needs the right amount of balance. Um... You have to defeat Fargus and his crew. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, cool. This was... This was fun. Um, anyhow. Let me... I think I'm going to close out here. But I'm just going to save. I'm going to figure out an excuse to use this. I really need to figure out an excuse to use this. Um, but I do want to take a couple minutes... Um, one, thank everyone for joining. I hope this was helpful, and um, I had fun doing it. It's been a while since I've made a map live. This is a really enjoyable way to do maps. And uh, does anyone have any questions? Anything on their minds that they're curious about with regards to mapping that I could help with? Wait, so is the stream over? Yeah, dude, it's late. I go to bed at 9. It's almost 9, my time zone. In case you forgot, I'm an old man. It was both helpful and nice. I'm glad to hear TDOS. Yeah, was, I'm glad I was inspired today to make a map. Actually, hmm. What's your favorite part of map making? Um, hard to say. I mean, I think for me, yeah, like that. Ooh, look at that. I'm into that. I'm feeling that one. Okay. Um, I think for me with a map, dude, I think once I've, like, I think figure, like, that moment of excitement when you have an idea and you put it to paper and you have that moment where it's like, this is my vision and I've realized it. Like, that's a really cool, that's a cool moment with map making. It's like any art. It's like I feel the same way when, like, I hear a melody in my head and then I pick up my guitar and I play it. I'm like, wow, I can do that. That's sweet. Um, it's that kind of feeling. I would say from a more technical standpoint, I don't know. I like making village maps and I like making field maps. Those are definitely my two favorites to work with. I've tried to get better at doing fort maps and castle maps, but indoor maps I just find are hard to do well without like a specific gimmick in mind. Like, you'll notice that I do very few fort and castle seas maps because I just find them so boring and super linear and not fun. There's very rarely enough room on those types of maps to do anything creative. And that's not to say there aren't examples of count counter that I'm actually thinking of some right now that counter what I just said. Like um, the escape map in Road to Ruin, Chapter 4, which I really like. Um actually really like the one from Souls of the Forest that Skryza did. I think it's the Alvin chapter where you recruit him, where your party starts split. But like, you, I feel like you have to go... Yeah, exactly, Warpath. Like, I feel like I'm always making the same map when it's indoors. Like, it always kind of looks and feels the same. And you kind of have to, like, really put a twist on it to make it fun. I agree. I agree with that. Um, and I think part of it is, like, when you're building a field map or a village map, there's, like, I think a lot more flexibility with the tile set and also just like the way like we think about nature and how that would impact the shape of what it is that we're making versus like a castle. It's like, oh, this has got to be ground. It's going to be symmetrical. And it just makes the map really boring. 
And then, like, if you make a map that's too asymmetrical indoors, it just looks really weird and feels fake in a strange way. Like, aesthetically not very pleasing. I mean, that's just because the eye loves symmetry. But also just, like, we're so used to, like, our structures in our real world being very symmetrical and designed with, like, utility. Not designed for Fire Emblem maps. Versus, like, you go to, like, a canyon... And it just looks totally different in the real world. Like you go to a beach and it's like there are curves, there are natural shapes. And so that inspires how you make a map. Yeah, that's why late game is so much of a slug. It's a lot of indoors stuff and it's long. Yeah, indoor maps are just like, I don't know. I think I just have, like, I think of, um, what's it? The, the Ina chapter in FE9. God, the chapter is so long, that big roundabout castle. A lot of them are just kind of slow. Um, there are ways to make indoor maps good, but I think usually you want to have split parties and just a lack of symmetry. But by and large, I do outdoor maps a lot, and I much prefer doing them. I find them much more natural to make, and I think they're better to play. Usually. But you can make a good map with anything. The, like, the tile sets I actively avoid, I never have done anything with cave tile set. That just seems really boring and interesting. I think FE6's guidance have turned me off from those. I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, I guess that would be some of my favorite things. I hope that's helpful. Does that answer your question, Random? I know I totally rambled and gave a lot more than probably what you were asking for. All right, well, I see chat is slowing down. I don't know if that's because there's a delay and people are still listening to me ramble. But I'm going to call it in here. I do want to thank everyone for joining um, and watching the map making process of making this, like, random-ass log town. Um, I think it looks okay. I think it'll be fun to play and experiment with. What coffee do I drink? Oh, dude. Um, Cafe Bustello is my go-to espresso. And I also like Sega Freddo Zanetti, which is another espresso and Italian one. Um, usually Bustello I have daily and this Sega Freddo is a special occasion thing because it's harder to get in the U.S. It's funny, actually, in the video that's going up tomorrow morning, I actually talk about this exact thing. That's super funny that you brought this up. But stovetop espresso maker, like a Bialetti one like that, like the Italian stovetop one, that's the move. Get you that nice dark coffee. The fragrance of dark coffee. All right, guys. I'm drifting. I'm like falling into my mic stand right now because I'm standing at my desk. But this was super fun. I enjoy doing maps. I hope you learned something. I hope watching me struggle through the map making process is enlightening in some way. I certainly learned a lot just from doing this. So I hope you did too. I'm actually going to just fix this real quick because it's bothering me and then boop terrific yeah good night everyone and thanks again for stopping by and i'll see you next time